All right, guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to set up our application layout. So before we do that, guys, I have prepared two GitHub repos. So the first one is going to be the HTML template that we're going to be using throughout the course. It's going to be a Tailwind CSS template. Now, you don't need to know Tailwind CSS to actually follow along. I'm going to show you guys which part to copy. Just think of it like any other uh, CSS template that you use, okay? So it's going to be with uh, Tailwind. And if I make any modifications, I show you guys the exact same uh, classes that I'm going to be using so the link will be in the description guys you can go ahead and check it out uh, the next one is going to be the github repository for the entire code base so it's going to be a github repo called the laravel blog project and if you want the latest version there you can check out the main branch and then i will create a separate branch for every single episode so for example if you want the code for episode one you can come over here select the branch for episode one and then uh, look at the code okay or you can check out the commit for that episode and see all the changes i made and maybe your code has some issue it's not working exactly like mine you can come over here and compare okay so uh, that's just something i want to point out now that we i have we have done that let's go ahead and actually start by setting up our template okay guys so uh just a quick brief overview in jetstream so since we have installed jetstream uh, there should be now a new fo folder called layouts so jetstream comes with two layouts one app and one guest so the guest layout is actually the HTML which is used for login and register pages. So let me go ahead and log out. So this guest.blade.php is used for uh, the login and register page. And then the app.blade.php file is used for when, once we have logged in, right? So inside the dashboard. Now on our application, we're going to be using the same template across all the pages. So later on, we can actually go ahead and delete this guest. For now, I'm going to keep it, but basically, we're going to put everything inside this app.blade file. And then uh, this welcome page is just a simple uh, template. It doesn't even have a layout, okay? So uh, I'm not really worried about it. So let's start off, guys, by first updating this app.blade.php. So let's go open up over our uh, GitHub repo. I'm going to open up the home page. You can use any of the pages, actually. The, the header and footer is exactly identical. I'm going to open up home. So let's come over here. And what we can do is that at the top part, it's going to be importing the Tailwind CSS CDN, right? So since Jetstream uses uh, Tailwind by default, we don't actually need to worry about that. So we're going to start off. I'm going to go ahead and copy all the code inside the body. So let's go ahead and do that. All the way down here. And I'm going to go inside this app.blade. Okay, so this is going to be our main layout file. And I'm going to get rid of this page heading. We don't need it for now. I'm going to also remove this uh, live or include for navigation menu. Now, later on, we will look at the navigation menu. We need some code from it, but I'm going to remove the import. Let's also get rid of all of these. Now, I'm going to keep the modals because we do need it. Uh, it's good to have that. I'm going to keep X banner as well. So let's go ahead and paste all the code we copied inside over here. Uh, that's a lot of code. So let's scroll down. Uh, I'm going to actually go ahead. And if you guys pay attention, there is this header section. I'm going to minimize that. Uh, there is going to be this code over here. So this is going to be the hero section for our homepage. I'm going to actually remove this. We don't need it for now in the layout. And then we have this main section, right? So this is going to be the main verb, the main content of each page goes. So inside here is going to be different on every page, right? So we can go ahead and actually remove all of that. And then this last part is going to be the footer. So we're going to keep that. Let's get rid of this body tag. We don't need it. Obviously, it's going to be duplicate. And it's actually identical to what we have over here. So we can go ahead and do that. Let's remove this. Let's also remove this. Okay. Now that we have done that, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and log in. And this is the page we get over here, guys. Okay. So we are on the dashboard page now. It kind of looks okay, but we don't have any color. So in order to fix that, the reason this is happening is because we need to compile our Tailwind CSS. So the way we do that, I showed you guys on the previous episode, you can go ahead and do npm run build, and this will go ahead and compile it for production. And for production, basically, guys, it only includes the CSS classes you have used because Telvin has a lot of utility classes, like maybe 90% of them are not going to be used on your project. So it's only going to include the ones you have, and then also it's going to minify all your JS and you know JavaScript, all those files. So uh, they take the least amount of time. So that's one way of doing it. But if you want it to happen live as a code, you can go ahead and do npm run dev. Let's go ahead and do that. This will basically look for our changes. And then once we change one of these blade files, it will actually automatically reload the page. So let's go ahead do a quick reload. And now, as you can see, we got the nice looking header and also we got the footer. So it seems to be working. So that now that is a, uh, now that that is done, guys, let's go ahead and actually 
kind of refactor this a little bit. I don't like the header and footer actually being inside this app.blade file because our header will be quite big. Uh, the footer is relatively small, so we could maybe keep the footer, but let's go ahead and uh, do that. So inside this views uh, layouts, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to name mine uh, partials. You can name yours whatever you like. Uh, I have previously myself used shared. You can use includes. Uh, you know, I just change it up depending on the project so it doesn't get boring. So let's go ahead and create one for uh, header.blade.php and then another one for our footer. And now that we have these two files, we can go ahead and cut the code for the header inside its respective file and same for the footer. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to save both these files. And now we will have to actually include this. So I'm going to say include uh, layouts.partials.header. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the footer. It should be under the main. And instead of header, let's make this footer. Let's save the file. Let's double check I have saved everything else. Let's go back. Let's do a quick reload. And it seems to be working, guys. So now that's a good sign. Good. So now that we have done that, guys, we have created our main layout. And this layout is actually used on the dashboard page. So right now we are on the dashboard page, but we are not seeing any of the dashboard page content. So in order to fix that inside this main, we need to do ahead and say, use this kind of mustache blade syntax and say slot. Okay. So this will be the main content of the page. It will be replaced with this slot variable. So let's do a quick reload. And as you can see, uh, we got this shown over here. Now, what about the top right, right? So previously, uh, Jetstream actually had kind of a profile icon menu of sorts. We can actually go ahead and reuse that. So I told you guys there is this navigation menu, right? That we removed the include. We can actually go ahead and reuse this. So let's open it up. And if you guys scroll down, obviously these are going to be the navigation links. Uh, we'll come back to those later on. Let's scroll down. There's going to be a section for a team dropdown. We are not using the team section, so I don't really care about that. I'm going to minimize it. If you scroll down a little bit more, there's actually a section called settings, okay? So let's go ahead and copy this entire thing. I'm going to copy the entire thing. Go to our header. And then once you're inside header, on the header right, you guys can see over here, I'm going to go ahead and paste it in uh, below login and register. So let's paste that in. Let's go back. And as you guys can see, we actually have a nice looking uh, kind of icon and the drop down. So this is the exact same thing that we had on Jetstream. So the code will work on our application as well. And it actually looks very nice. So let's go on the profile page. The profile page also seems to be working fine. I might update the style a little bit. And then uh, I think the logout should also work fine. Uh, it is indeed. Okay. Now let's also fix this login and register buttons. They shouldn't be shown once we are logged in. So this is relatively easy to do. Let's go back to the header. And so what we can do is kind of wrap these login and register by a guest blade directive. So what this guest does is it's going to be guest and then end guest. Whatever you kind of have inside it will be only shown when the user is logged out. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Save it. And now we should no longer be seen. Now, since we have done the kind of uh, this guest, we also need to do the same for our drop down menu because it is accessing the logged in user. So we need to make sure that we only show it when the user is logged in. So we can go ahead and say auth and do something like this. And it seems to be working fine. Now, one thing we can do, guys, is we can actually extract these into their own files. I think that's a good thing to do. I might later on want to add even more files to this and it might get a little bit too big. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to go ahead on our partials, create a new one for I'm going to say header. Uh, right, let's say hit a right auth or when we are authenticated, I'm going to say blade.php and then I'm going to create another one for a header uh, right guest or when we are showing it for a guest. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm expecting the these menus to get a little bit big. So I'm going to copy the guest part, which is going to be login and register over to header right guest, as you guys can see. And I'm going to close the file and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the auth version as well. Okay, so let's open up the header, take the drop down menu stuff. I'm going to move it over here. Let's also remove this comment. I think we don't need it. And I've also, by the way, guys, we are using this X drop down. This is provided by Jetstream. 
it's a kind of a drop down menu that uses Alpine JS. I'll show you guys all these kind of uh, components later on as we try to customize them. So I just want to mention this is where the drop down is coming from. So now that we have done that, guys, we can go ahead and include these. I'm going to say include uh, header right guest and then also header right art. Okay, let's do a quick format. Let's do that. Let's go back. And it is telling us header right art is not fine. And the reason is I need to say layouts dot partials dot headers, right? And same for here. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, let's do a reload and seems to be working now. So now, by the way, this thing is not centered. Uh, we'll fix that later on. We don't actually need this. So I'm just keeping it here. So we have something displaying. Let's go ahead and log out guys as well. So now that we have fixed our dashboard page for when the users are logged in, we also need to do the same for when they are not logged in, right? So on this login and register page. Now, as I mentioned, these two pages or all the authentication pages, I think it's around five of them. They all use the guest layout. So there are two ways of doing this. You can go ahead and on your guest.layout, have it be exactly identical to the app, something like this. Actually, this should work. So we can do this or we can go ahead and update all our authentication pages to use our uh, kind of app layout. Okay, so it's up to you which one you want to do. The easiest way, obviously, is you can just go ahead and use the guest. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, it seems to be working. However, the layout is kind of broken. Okay, so let's go ahead and check one of these pages. I'm going to go ahead, open up the login page so we can see, uh, find a way to fix it. So let's go open up, do that. We can search for the pages on VS Code. If you guys are on VS Code, you can do command a P if you're on Mac and it will give you kind of a search bar or if you're on Windows, you can do control P. Okay, so this page that I bring here is a VS Code shortcut. There should be a similar one on PHP Storm. And so it gives you the ability to quickly search for pages. But the pages we're looking for is auth login. Okay, so this is the file. Let's open it up. And so first of all, it's doing X guest layout, which is our guest layout over here. So this is very supporting it. And then it's also using another blade component called authentication card. So this X here, guys, is a prefix for blade components. And all of these are located at under views components, right? Obviously without the X. So this one is authentication card. Let's find it it's somewhere around here, authentication card. And uh, so this is it. Now, I think the reason this is happening is this one is not taking the full width. So one thing we can do is I can say full, sorry, W full. It's a Tailwind CSS uh, class that makes it makes the element take the entire page width. So let's do a quick reload. And it seems to be working now. Now, the, it does have a gray background. I don't like that. So we can go ahead and find it. It's over here, BG gray 100. I'm going to get rid of it. Let's do that. And now I think it is working. Good. Very nice, guys. So let's go ahead and check out all the other pages. They all seem to be working. Same for the register page as well. Very nice. So let's try to log in. And the login functionality is also working. So let's go back to the profile page. Uh, I mentioned I like to update this a little bit. So the, the profile uh, components seem to have a little bit of a shadow. I don't know if it's visible on YouTube. Uh, so I would like to get rid of that because I think on our template, we are, we are not really using shadows anywhere. So it's good to get rid of it. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so one way of finding it is we can go ahead and find the profile page first. So there is a section for profile and inside it, there's going to be different blade files for all of these actions. You can see update profile information, update password. So there is a file for each of these, right? There's an update password and update profile. So let's find one of these. I'm going to open up op update profile. And it seems to be using an X form section blade component. So we need to go ahead and find this and get rid of this shadow. So I'm going to go ahead inside our components, find it uh, form section. It's over here. And we should see some sort of shadow somewhere. Where is it? It's over here. Okay, so let's get rid of it. There is another one down here as well. So I'm just going to delete these. Uh, save the file let's go back and as you guys can see the shadow is gone i'm going to double check now these two seem to be using a different component so let's double check those as well so this one is two-factor uh, authentication let's find it so i'll close this also let's close all the files at the top so let's find 2fa page which is two-factor authentication and scroll all the way at the top so this one is using x action section so it's a different type of section 
I assume the reason is different is because it has this enable button. So that's why they have a different layout. So let's go ahead and find it. X action section should be at the top over here. And do you guys see a shadow? It's over here. So let's comment, get rid of that as well. And boom, it is fixed as well. So one more thing I would like to change, guys, is also going to be these inputs. So the Jetstream inputs seem to have a little bit of a shadow. Uh, the layout we are using don't, doesn't have that. So I want the inputs to be consistent all around. So we can go ahead and fix that. Now, I do need to find where we have an input. I think we can find an input on the blog page. So let's go on our HTML, look at the blog. And I'm going to search for an input tag somewhere. I think we only have one input tag. And I'm going to copy the HTML, kind of the CSS code for it. Now, it has some CSS for like width and margin left. I'm not going to be touching those because those are kind of may change depending on the use case. I'm going to kind of copy everything after from BG transparent and afterwards. So let's go ahead and do that all the way to the end. So I'm going to go copy it. Now we need to find inside these components, there should be something for input. So let's just search. It's over here, input.blade.php. Let's open it up. So it has a prop for disabling it, which is nice. And so this is the HTML for it. We can go ahead and actually replace this with the one we copied from GitHub. If I can actually do that. Okay, so I'm going to remove it paste that in. And if you are using your own template, guys, maybe bootstrap, we can go ahead and do the same thing. Just replace it with the bootstrap CSS classes. So let's go ahead and check if it's working. It seems to have been updated. All of these look very ugly right now. I'm not sure why. So let's check out the login and logout page as well. See how they look. Actually, the login logout page looks okay. Now, I think the main reason it doesn't look good is because we don't have a placeholder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it maybe a little bit of border. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So it doesn't look like some empty space. So let's find the input. I think actually the reason, guys, is we are using BG transparent. So one way of fixing it is let's find the background over here. I think we are using BG one gray 100. So I'm going to go ahead and place this transparent with BG gray 100. And that should hopefully update this up. And let's do a reload. Okay, now we are able to see these. So let's log in as well. Let's go to the profile page. And now we are actually able to see our inputs. So that's very nice, guys. Uh, that's going to be it for today's episode. I just wanted to show you guys how to update the main layout of our application. So we still have some more layout related stuff to do, but that's going to be the core part of it. So usually when you start a new Jetstream application, updating the layout can be a little bit difficult for new commerce to Jetstream. So I wanted to show you guys how I would personally do it. Now, in most cases, you may have a different layout for your app or guest. So for now, we are using the exact same layout. So later on, if you like, maybe we can go ahead and change this up. Now, if you want to delete this guest, you can also go ahead and do it, but you will have to update all your authentication pages. So if we, for example, look at confirm password, it's using X guest layout. So if you're going to be deleting the guest file, you need to make sure you're also changing this from guest to app. Okay. So for now, I'm going to keep the guest in case we want to change it later on, but that's going to be it for now. So if you guys have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you like the video and subscribe so you get notified of the latest videos and I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.